Welcome to another episode of Domversations. Today we have Anthony. Okay, let me try. Damashino? Dam- yeah, that's great. I did it. You did it. I did not think I was going to do it. Um, so Anthony, welcome. Thank you so much for being here. I'm excited. Thank you for having me. I'm excited as well. Yeah, this is great. So Anthony is the author um, of the book, The Empty Nest Blueprint. I love this idea because I, are there other books out there like that? Like, I don't know. You know, most are memoirs, like, you know, the story of uh, myself and my daughter and how we X, Y, Z, right? So that there weren't, for me, there wasn't a girlfriend's guide to pregnancy or what to expect when you're expecting yeah. or empty nesters. And I looked for one and I didn't find one and thus went down that rabbit hole, right? And ended up writing one. So. Yeah. Yeah. And have you always been a reader? Yeah. You know, like you, I am a kind of a self-help junkie a little yeah. bit. Uh, I really, I really like even grabbing, you know, grabbing a book and getting that concept and drilling it into my head and seeing if I can practice meditation or eat better or whatever yeah. that thing is. Yeah. Uh, and so when I, when I was getting closer to that self-help or uh, excuse me, that emptiness phase, you know, I started looking, right? I mean, the obvious thing for yeah. uh, self-help addicts is go look for the book that can help me through this. And there just wasn't anything out there that kind of spoke to me. You yeah. know? Luckily, luckily, I did it uh, far enough in advance before my kids left. My son was leaving, but I still had two daughters in high school. So okay, so gave me some time. Who had the harder time, your wife or you? Uh, with the boy, with my son, she had the harder time, uh, her first child, obviously that mom son relationship. Uh, but the, I think the girls were harder for me. The two, uh, Isn't that interesting? following girls were harder for me, which, you know, I hate to be stereotypical, but you know, what do dads worry about? They worry about safety. They worry about their girls making good decisions, not getting themselves in situations one right. doesn't want them to be in in college right. you know, all yeah. of those things right so both of you guys dealt with it the same or different like did were you, were you mopey or how what were your <laughs> symptoms uh you know uh for me it was it, it there's the there's a relationship with the the children right which is a big portion of it and uh, and we each as as parents, you know, husband and wife, you have your separate relationships with each of your kids, right? The go ask mom, she says no. Go ask dad, he says yes, or yeah. whatever that thing is, right? That right. we've all lived with. Um, part of the big empty nest push was the relationship between Karen and myself, right? The mm-hmm. the, the spousal relationship, etc. So although I think uh, when our kids launched, we had different relationships with our kids. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, he, him, my son and I were kind of alpha mailing a little bit. It was time for him to go. Yeah. If that makes any sense. Yes, it does. Where with, uh, I think with the, with the ladies, it was alpha femaling a little bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so I think there was a little more conflict, you know, and, and just, I know mom, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. You're outgoing uh, each other. It, it just, it's each child is very different. Each, same, you know, same house, same parents, same experience. And yet, you know, they're, they're, they're their own unique person that reacts in their own way. Yeah. What was the hardest part for you starting the book? Like, how did you know where to start? Did you go all the way back to the, when they were little or how did you start it? Yeah, that's a great, it's a great question. The, the first thing I did, uh, I just did a ton of research, right? And I read, I have read, I think every single thing on the subject of empty nesting. I mean, from Russian studies to Chinese uh, research uh, and then every you know article out there on the internet about empty nesting. So the first thing I did is, is I went back and I kind of read everything I could just to, just to get, to help put myself in the right space right and then and then what i realized when i when i started writing the book is uh it goes back there there's several things there's the relationship you have with the child as i said the relationship you have with your spouse but there's also your parenting style Mm -hmm. like like what kind of what was your parenting style don and and your relationship with your parents and how you grew up 
And, and there's so many different dynamics to who we are by the time our kids are launching uh, that I really tried to go back and holistically look at all of those things. So your parenting DNA, how you how you became the parent you are, what's your what's your parenting style, then your relationship with your kids, then your relationship in your marriage, and then try and and try and pull all of that together to start coming up with a blueprint and a plan later in life. So, mm -hmm. you know, I, I guess if one could criticize the the book, which no one would ever want to do. No, there's but, no reason for that. But but the first half is really all of that background right? Kind of exploring and learning about yourself and putting you in the mindset. So the second half, you're ready to start making actions and plans and build the future you want. Oh, I love that. I like how you say launching too, that the kids are <laughs> launching because they really are. And it's yeah. hard to let them fly, but they, they need that, you know, and you are also growing and changing. This is the first time you've had a 19 year old. This is the first time, you know, yeah. so it's, it's growing for the parent too. And, and I don't know, I'm doing this for the first time too, you know, so it, <laughs> yeah. there's a lot of growing. So did you interview people that had gone through it to ask them? Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's funny for, for the first, uh, book, not, I had a lot of conversations about it, right? Obviously when you tell someone that you're writing a book or looking into emptiness syndrome or the emptiness mm -hmm. transition or whatever those things are, you know, everyone tells you their story, which is yeah. great yeah. because you learn a lot from them. Again, there was a lot more research out there on, on becoming an empty nester, uh, and on emptiness syndrome, so to speak, but not so much on single parenting or a father's perspective, or, you know, it's a lot of mom and me type of things versus, you know, the, the male part. And so I, I did get a lot of insight through conversations. Mm -hmm. um, in, in a, it, so, so I have a second book for single empty nesters. And since I am not one single empty nest parents, that one uh, I have a survey out there. I'm interviewing people. I'm talking to people uh, because, you know, you, my own personal experience, I can relate and I know a lot about the subject, but, you know, I think a single empty nester has a, a harder, uh, you know, row to hoe, so to speak, because yeah. they, uh, you know, it's harder to do something on your own than it is with someone else. And so I uh, hats go off to teachers, hats go off to single parents who have mm -hmm. raised children on their own. Yeah. Yeah. There's so many different perspectives. As we were saying before I hit record, you could yeah. write a million books, you know, just all the different <laughs> perspectives. But so for me, I was raising my kids during my divorce and I felt like them leaving every other weekend to go to their dads helped me mm. prepare emotionally for them to be gone once they were grown and finally did leave. Yeah. I felt like, okay, I'm already used to not having them around all the time. So, and besides all of that, kids, as they get older are just busier anyway. So you hardly see them anyway. Yeah. And so it's like, it, whether they're in town or an hour away, a lot of the times you don't even see your kid if they're working a full-time job or so, I don't know, in a way, I feel like that kind of helps prepare you too, but I wonder why they call it syndrome. I mean, that does make it, it gives it a connotation, you know, like it's a disease or, yeah. you know, like you're yeah. never going to get out of it. Did you feel like you were depressed? Um, no, you know, for me, for me, for my son, you know, and, and I don't get me wrong. I love my son, but you know, it, like I said, he, we, he was ready to launch. I was excited about him launching, et cetera. I think with my girls, uh, I, there was more sadness. And I think, you know, you asked me, which one was the hardest you have three. Was your first, the hardest, or was your last, the hardest? Uh, my boys moved out together. Oh God. That made it. They made, I mean, they moved into an apartment or a house. They rented a house together. So that helped. Cause I knew they had each other. Yeah. And then my yeah. daughter moved out at the same time we moved out of home to a different house. So mm. there was a lot of changes going on at once. So they were all difficult, but I think we were all ready. 
you know, plus yeah. it was 2020, we were in the middle of COVID. So who yeah. knew what was happening? Yeah. So it was a lot of changes all going on at once. Um, so to answer, I can't answer that. I feel like they were all just, we were all ready. Everybody was yeah. ready. You know, and I, and I had the, it's great that you, like you said, you had done some like mental prep work, right? Because you experienced them out of the house. You probably started focusing a little bit more on yourself because you had those weekends to yourself, right? right? Which, yeah. which is, which is great because a lot of parents don't have that opportunity, right? They're, they're, yeah. they're not focusing on themselves and they never have that time alone and someone or the kids are always around. So I think, you know, I think that's for you. I mean, I think that's a great, that's a great way to kind of dip your toe into the pool, so to speak. For me, you know, I, I while I still had two, I started uh, looking into the topic. So I was aware mm -hmm. of, and I think, you know, the secret is being aware of this stage, right? That the secret yeah, it's is- coming, is ready or not. Yeah. Knowing it's coming. So you know what to expect and then you could prepare for it, right? And so I, I, I was lucky enough to have done a lot of research. So I wasn't, you know, I didn't feel a ton of sadness and grief. And now were there moments I missed my kids? Of course, there were moments I missed my kids. Were there moments I was in the car and I wanted to call them and tell them something that happened at work or a funny joke I heard? There was, and I made a decision not to kind of bother them every time I thought of them, uh, which was hard, right? Yeah. That, that was a hard part too, Don, because you know you get so used to them being around, you want to talk to them all the time. And yet, to your point, what you said, are you want them to grow, right? You want them to get out there and grow. And and they're not going to do it if you're calling them every 10 minutes, right. telling them you heard a funny joke on, you know, right. the radio. Yeah. Gosh, that made me tear up. <laughs> <laughs> it's so true, though. You miss them, but you, you know it's good for them. Um, but I, in doing hair, you know, I talked to so many different people that were going through that stage and they would say, you know all of a sudden you just wake up and it's just you and your husband. It's like, who are you? Like, I don't even know what yeah. I like. I don't even know if I, what should we do together? All we've done is just drive the kids for the last three years all over the map. And you know, who are we now as a couple? So that's a whole other chapter, getting to know yourself yeah. at the age that you're at. And then yes. you left your job. Did that coincide with when your kids were leaving? Your career it, changed? It, uh, you know, it was it was during COVID as well, right? Wow. Uh, in fact, in fact, I left I left my job and then two weeks later COVID hit. And so I had all these plans of things I would do and all and and two of my kids came back from college, right? And ended up living with us for a few months. It was really a gift in many ways because we got to connect one yeah. last time as a family. Right. You know, while they were essentially supposed to be away at college. Mm -hmm. Um, and they all went back obviously, yeah. but, um, yeah, the, the, the work thing just happened that way. Uh, but, but to your, to your prior point, the, I think, you know, you live with someone for 20 years, Don, you're a family focused person. You're going to soccer things. You're, what are we going to eat tonight? We've got to take care of the house. We've got to pay the bills, all of those things. And, you know, I think I was a great father. I think I was family focused and I was knocking it out of the park. Husband, caring husband for my wife, putting her priorities first. Probably not so much, Don, to be yeah. quite honest. Well, that's because, hard. You're stretched because thin. Because we're focused on the family or I'm right. focused on work or you're focused on your career, right? And so I think out of all the people you can de deprioritize, you cannot deprioritize de your boss. You cannot not go into the salon, Don, and meet that person who's scheduled to see you. Right, right. You you can't not pay the bills and, and you can't neglect your children, essentially, right? Mm -hmm. But you can tell your spouse that, you know, listen, we'll do that tomorrow. Or they're the one person in the world that is supposed to be okay if you deprioritize them. Well, imagine doing that for 20 years to yeah. some degree. Right. That that's why kind of the you know the topic of gray divorce has kind of come up because exactly to your point, two decades living with someone, you're focusing on all these other things, not mm -hmm. each other. 
it's easy to get lost, right? It's easy to prioritize everything but that other person. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't realize that they had a term for that gray divorce. I yeah. remember ha having all the people that would say, well, I'm not happy in my marriage, but I'll just wait until the kids are off to college and then we'll divorce. And I'm like, I never understood that. And this is no judgment <laughs> towards anybody that does that. But I'm like, why would you do that? Like the kids live under your roof. They know that you're unhappy. Yeah. It's not like you got this big facade and yeah. the kids have no yeah. idea what's happening. Let's, yeah. let's pretend for five years before, <laughs> you know, they leave the house. That doesn't make any sense to me either, but people do do that, right? They don't want to disrupt the lives or move somewhere else or whatever the reasons are. Right. right. So are you and your wife like trying to find new hobbies to do together? Are you just like feeling like you're dating again, starting from yeah. scratch? So yeah, there was a, there was a point and, and to be fair that the, um, my wife is great. The realization hit me, not necessarily her. Right. And so, um, so I realized that there were things that, uh, I, I tell a story in the book called it's, it's Friday fun night. And, I'll, I'll tell it super quick, but oh, I'm um, not in a rush. <laughs> yeah, okay. uh, so, so me in HR, right. I would, uh, you know, what do you do in HR? You listen to people all day long and come into your office. My boss is mean to me. I should be making more money. I want a promotion, not always complaining, but, but you're dealing with adults and their problems. Mm -hmm. My wife is a school teacher. She teaches first grade. So she deals with children. And 26 of them and their problems all day. She loves it, right? So every Friday night, she comes home from work. I come home from work. The last thing I want to do, Don, is talk to an adult. I am done talking to adults. I've listened mm -hmm. to them all week long. I've been in HR. I love people. But yeah. I just want to decompress. Yep. She's been with kids all day. She wants to talk what does she to want adults. To do? Yeah. She just wants to have an adult conversation with adults and have go out and speak to adults. Right. So every Friday we would kind of go through this. What do you want to do? And I would default to, I don't want to, I'm, you know, I'm tired, long week. I just want to watch a movie and chill. Yeah. And one, and, and Karen being the better person would give in and, and, you know, we'd watch the movie and we wouldn't go out. And one day she pushed me a little harder than most. And I saw it in her eyes when she said to me, hey, Anthony, you know, I want to go out. I don't want to sit home. I don't want to just be here. I want to go out and do things. And, and, and I kind of at that moment saw every single Friday night when I was winning this argument and she was, she was obviously upset with that pattern, right? And, and I felt horrible. When I, when I made this, you know, aha moment. And then I started thinking to myself, you know, how many other Friday night, Friday fun night things are out there that she has pent up inside that I'm holding her back from, right? Mm. So, so the good news is every Friday, we have Friday fun night. I rally, I mentally know we're gonna go out. She comes home, we do something fun. We go out, we see friends, we play games. Sometimes we're even inside but every friday night we're dedicated to doing something fun it's friday fun night we have a silly little jingle song that we sing oh my please let me hear this oh god <laughs> it just goes friday fun night it's friday fun night so <laughs> that's the jingle right and we sing it to each other i know it's crazy that is adorable oh, i love god. that so much but it, that, it, so that was the impetus for me to realize and step back and say, hey, I really got to reevaluate my marriage. Right. And, and both of my both of my daughters were in high school. My son had just launched at the time. And I realized that, hey, I, I need to do something different. And that kind of led me down this whole path. Right. That's wonderful. Yeah. But it is like, I, I, I haven't aired it yet, but I had a um, podcast episode about communication and love languages. And it's mm -hmm. very common for us to do the love language that we want to our spouse. Yeah. You know? So mine's words of affirmation. So I'm like, thanks, honey. And yep. And he changes my oil. And I'm like, 
No, I don't want you to change my oil. That's not how you show me you love me. I want you to tell me how great I am and you know, all that. So yeah. it's funny. It's all of these things that you just have, if you take the time, delve into it, into the relationship and really figure out how can I make them happy? But I'm in the chapter now where we have grandkids. And so that's a whole new way to fall in love with your significant it sounds other amazing, again. Right? It, I, I don't oh want it to gosh. happen too early for me, but no. it sounds amazing. Right? No. And I, you know, I am just going to be 53. So I'm a young grandma. I mean, yeah. I, I could be younger, but I mean, I I'm young enough. And so I didn't know it was going to all happen at once, but my kids all have done their milestones all at once. So here we are now they're all having kids and it's the best. You get to a good night's sleep. You don't have to deal with anything. Yeah. You just get to hold them and love them. And it's like, you're at an age where you can appreciate it when you couldn't, when you were doing the grind as your kids were growing, right. where you're just like exhausted and sleep deprived and you feel like you have no energy and you have to work and you're thinking of bills. You're just in a better place in your life when these babies come, if they yeah. come, you know, it's yeah. just nice. So, um, that's a whole other thing, but that I, even though um, my husband is my second husband, I do feel like that's just been a way for us to have a commonality that nobody else can enjoy like we can, you yeah. know, that's our grandkids. That's our thing. Yeah. And yeah, so that's, I'm looking forward to that for you. You will love it. So, so what that tells me, Dawn, right, is that you throughout this transition, right, with your, with your boys and your daughter, uh, you've kept that you've kept a strong relationship with them. Right. Yes. Um, yeah. which, which is, you know, I, I mean, I don't want to scare you, but one in four families are, uh, there's someone that's disowning someone else. There is a brother or sister, not talking to each other. There is a mother or father that is not talking to that child or that child is not talking to their mother. And really? Father, right. And for, and you know, I'm 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 blessed to have my three kids and we have a great relationship. I, I do think I, I love them naturally, but I work on it because I want to make sure that this is a place they want to come. This yeah. is these are the traditions we want to do together, you know. Uh but but it's scary to think that through some people through this transition, it goes the other way, right? That that kid leaves and because of religious beliefs or because of pressure or because mm -hmm. of you not accepting their significant other or their significant other being toxic against you, right? Or whatever, all of those things that can happen. Yeah. You know, to 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 think that you could get in a situation where you're disconnecting from your children or they disconnect from you would be terrifying, let alone not being able to see your grandchild, right? Right. Yeah. I mean, ugh. Yeah, so, that's crazy statistic. I didn't realize that. Yeah. So I think I think it's it's as part of the empty nest transition, right? There is, as you talked about, there's there's identifying the things you want to do for yourself moving forward in your life. There's uh the relationship you want with your spouse and your marriage. And then there there is that relationship with your children. Mm -hmm. And there's ways to foster that versus pushing them away. Right. I think it does boil down to just um, finding your own, what makes you happy as an individual. Cause once that happens, then it spills over to everything else. Yeah. But I remember my husband, he's a huge cyclist. He rides bikes and he rides up mountains and all this. And, and he's like, your kids are grown and gone now. Like, what, do, what are your hobbies? And I was like, drinking wine. Like, I don't have any <laughs> hobbies. I don't, I don't know what I like. I worked three jobs, you know, I was trying yeah. to just put food on the table. And, and so getting to know yourself and taking that time and what do I even like, you know, and really yeah. delving into that. And that's where those self-help books come into play. And, you know, the YouTube videos, whatever you have time for just trying to find stuff that makes you happy. Cause then that will just carry over into all of your relationships. Yeah. Um, but yeah. And I've, I've never talked about it, but you know, you hate to have like hobby pressure, right? I think there are a lot of people that move towards retirement or they stop working and they feel like they're doing nothing and they're lost. And, and, and I think that's a natural feeling for people. Yeah. You know, you don't have to take up crocheting next week. So you have a hobby, but I right. do think it's, I think 
to your point, leave yourself open to explore different things. I mean, I'm not calling your podcast a hobby because it's it's a it hobby is. on steroids slash career. But what a <laughs> phenomenal thing to do, right? It, right? If you don't want to crochet and you don't like pickleball, I mean, a podcast, amazing, right? Yeah. That's a fantastic, that's a t next level thing you can take and learn and grow and move on. Right? Yeah, and right. I, I think we all have that, whether it is crocheting pickleball or a podcast it, somewhere, we just need to be open to find it. Yeah. Did you always feel like you wanted to write a book someday? You I, just did. Didn't... Okay. I did. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't even have I know. to finish. I know. Like I, did. I, I, did, I didn't, I, I know. I, I didn't, you know, I didn't know what, you know, I, you know, was I going to write Harry Potter? Probably not. But, uh, but I, I knew there was a book in me somewhere. I think it's funny that it came out to be this, uh, but I have a vision board and I, I do have a vision board. I've carried it with me for 15 years on wow. said board. There are two books on that board. And so, Amazing. you know, you want to accomplish your goals. You want to set goals for the long term. And this is just something I've always wanted to do. So it's exciting to be doing it. Right. Yeah. And the thing that I love so much about it too, is that you're leaving a legacy, like long after you're gone, not to be morbid, but long after you're gone, there's going to be a book and it's got your name on it and you yeah. wrote it. Nobody else did that. You did that. And that's so cool for your kids, you know, to just that. Yeah. My dad, he's an author, you know, yeah. you, you can look yeah. up his book. It's he's on Amazon. That's huge. That's yeah. huge. Cause yeah. I think a lot of people think they could write a book or they maybe think there's a good idea for a book, but to actually sit down and write it and do the chapters and go through the whole entire process, like seriously, kudos to you. I think that yeah, is a thank you. huge feat. I think it's amazing. And I think it's it, awesome that you're going to write another one too, or you're in the <laughs> middle of another one. Yeah. It's, Life it's experience. It's early going, right? And, and so I think you you have definitely gone through this and and I really haven't already. But you know, the the reason why we're doing this is because it's of interest to us, but in our hearts to help other people, right? Yeah. I mean, the, you, this podcast, your podcast, is a range of topics to help other people. and and for me, you know the book the book came out last September. Um, you know, it's it's been a slow roll out there, you know, just out on uh, you know, Facebook and Instagram, introducing the book to as many people as I can. But but when you get that feedback, Don, and I'm sure you've gotten it, I'm I'm hoping for it. But from that first person you've never met, you don't know at all, who you nothing to do with you comes to you and says, "Hey, I just loved Podcast 23. Mm -hmm. It touched me. It made me think about my life." Right. So right. that to me is the reason for the, that's the goal of the whole thing, right? Yeah. I'm glad my kids are proud of me. I'm excited I got it done. But but when that stranger reaches out and says, thank you for helping me, I, I think that's the gold, right? That That's that's what I really want. And I'm not, strangers, don't do not do that just to meet my demands. But but I mean, that's, that's why I want to do it, you yeah. know? Yeah, no, that's great. So this second one, how far are you into it? Are you halfway through or? Yeah, I'm pretty, I'm pretty far into it, actually. Uh, I, I think I'm maybe three quarters through. Uh, I, I still collecting feedback from single parents. So it's emptiness blueprint, blueprint for single parents. Uh, and it's, it's a little harder to write, right? Because I'm not one. But I, I, uh, I, I'm fascinated by, you know, as I said earlier, the respect I have for a single parent. Mm -hmm. And, and Don, the statistics aren't great, right? They, you know, they're close to poverty in many cases. They have more financial stress. They, they're one income. They're trying to put kids through college or help support kids uh, on their own. It's just a, it's a very, we all have our difficult roads, but mm -hmm. it's a very difficult road to, to raise a parent, um, you know, on your own. And, and the statistics, statistics I've pulled out from, uh, from my survey, which is, you know, a sample size of, you know, upwards of 50 or so now, uh, most of them are doing this on their own. So the most people who filled it out, it's not weekend at husband or at, at my father's weekend at my mother's. It is a female taking care of a child or more on her own, mm. working a job or more without any help, help from maybe their parents and things like that. But it's just a, it's a tougher profile. 
Yeah. You know? Yeah, really. Like that's huge. And yeah. I love that when you watch professional football or whatever, and they talk about their mom, thanks to my mom, you know, yeah. I mean, for them, that's got to be their biggest reward is just hearing it from their kid or saying Absolutely. that they got their work ethic. When my kids say they got their work ethic from me, that makes me feel so good. And the great Mother's Day cards that you get, you know, once a year <laughs> where you get some validation that you did a good job. Well, yeah. I think what you're doing is phenomenal. I hope you write more books. I hope that you get inspired because I just think it's a great message. And I'm glad that you finally got a chance to write, write yeah, your book. Thank you, Donna. And, and, you know, right back at you, I think, you know, I've, I've, like I said, I've only dipped my toe into uh, several episodes, but there's, I think 174 out there or more than that. So yeah, yeah, uh, a lot more is. to dive into, but I, I love, uh, you called it a variety show, I think in an introduction. And I love the fact that it is so broad, right. And, and so there's a little something for everybody and maybe a lot for everybody scroll through, find the thing that resonates with you and dive in. Right. <laughs> Hey, you can be my PR here. Yeah, there you go. There you go. <laughs> well, I think part of it is undiagnosed ADHD. I think that's part of it. And then the we share part, that trait. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I do. I just want to help. I just want to get everything out there for everybody. And I just have interests and I love meeting new people. And um, yeah, you seem like such a great guy. I'm super happy for you and for Karen. I hope the yeah. next chapter goes great for you guys. And uh, yeah, when you're getting ready to launch your other book, you can come back. You can talk about okay. it. I'd love to have you back. Perfect. Thank you. All right. Um, tell people how they can find you and find your book and all that. Do you have a website? Yeah. So uh, the book, The Empty Nest Blueprint is sold online by pretty much anywhere books are sold. Amazon, Barnes and Noble, et cetera. Um, AnthonyDamashino.com. You know, that's a mouthful. Uh, so I'll put it in the show notes so people yeah, know they don't the try and notes, spell exactly. it. <laughs> I, I am, uh, you know, so uh, on the website I have, I just launched an an empty nest readiness quiz for parents and an empty nest readiness quiz for single parents. So go out there and uh, and take it if you're kind of wondering, are you know, am I mentally and and physically ready to to jump on this? I'm obviously on Facebook like you and and Instagram, and uh, my daughter helps me with my TikTok page and YouTube <laughs> oh, and Pinterest. My gosh, yeah, it, there's too many things to be on these days. There is, yeah, it's overwhelming. Um, okay, so Anthony, the empty nest blueprint. Find it on Amazon or anywhere else you find books. Thank you so much. I appreciate your time and I'll be in touch. Thank you, Don. Appreciate All right. it. All right. Bye-bye.